And a very pleasant Tuesday evening to everyone. We welcome you to Ridgecrest Talk and our theme as every Tuesday night is sports and athletics and tonight we have Justice Scott and he's been here before. We've talked Saracoso baseball. We've talked a little bit about the NFL. Tonight we're going to mainly talk about some of the college football bowl games coming up in this time of the year. If you're a football fan you're really in seventh heaven because of all the pigskin stuff that's on TV and then you get the NFL playoffs and you could probably wear out the couch and not go outdoors again for a while. But Justice is a huge uh, football fan. Then if we have time in our last segment we'll talk a little Saracoso baseball. But let's look at some of the um, interesting games that are that are coming up here and a big one that I'm just just I would really like to see this one. Arizona State is going to go ahead and play Duke. Now, Arizona State, and, and uh, Coach is familiar with, with some of these things, but Arizona State, coached by Todd Graham. Graham has been there three years now. They had a great season. They were 9-3. and three. They had wins over UCLA and USC. They were number seven in the nation. In fact, there was talk they were going to be one of the top four contenders, a good possibility. They went up to Corvallis, got beat by Oregon State, and that pretty much took any shot they had to get in that top four out. And then they played University of Arizona to see who would go to the Rose Bowl, and they lost to the Wildcats. So, but Duke, coached by David Cutliffe, Duke has really come out of nowhere. They're 9-3, and three, and it wasn't all that long ago that when we thought about Duke, we only thought about one thing, and that's basketball. Correct. Duke used to be um, in the uh, ACC just that everybody guaranteed win when they played Duke. and, and uh, over the last few years, they've certainly turned it around a little bit and, and developed a, a solid football program and a great conference. And Arizona State's kind of the same way. That uh, they've this year they're kind of the darling of the NCAA football and uh, um, pundits and announcers, and they thought they were the the ones that were going to kind of sneak in in the Pac-12. And uh, they had a good year, so that is certainly uh, going to be a fun game to watch. And Duke again is a one-point underdog in this game, but really this thing could go either way. Should be a real fun game to watch. Duke likes to run the football. Arizona State likes to run and throw the football. They have a good running back in D.J. Foster. They have a lot of Southern California kids, so a lot of interest in that game. That's going to be the Sun Bowl, and that'll be on CBS. And then we have another intriguing game, Nebraska and USC. Well, Nebraska's made the news a whole lot in the last few weeks. They fired their head coach, Bo Pelini. Pelini was there for four years and won a lot of football games, and usually you think of 9-3 and three as pretty darn good, but not in Lincoln. And within about a week and a half, he takes a job at Youngstown State. Now, figure that one out, Justice. You go from Lincoln, Nebraska to Youngstown, Ohio. Um, I guess he must love football. He didn't want to wait a year. Uh, but your thoughts on going 10-3 and three and not getting your job back? You know, it's, it's, uh, as a coach, it's, it's got to be one of the most uh, frustrating, scary things to be in that situation. But guys like that, with their track record and, and the places they've been, when they accept a job like Nebraska, or you go down the list, um, Michigan, you know, Florida, that uh, um, whatever the administration says and the boosters say about cleaning up a program and, you know, we want students to graduate, ultimately it's about winning football games and, and having a chance to compete for a national championship. That's ultimately it. Um, so when, when programs like that feel like uh, they're far away from that goal, yeah, your, your job is going to be on the line. Now, Nebraska, had they not lost to Minnesota, probably would have saved Pelini's job. They would have been co-champions of the league. And Nebraska has named Mike Riley, the longtime Oregon State coach, as their new head coach. Now, one of the criticisms of Bo Pelini was at Nebraska, he didn't win the big games, and they didn't see anything changing. Well, as much as I like Mike Riley, who is a very good coach in a program that you know, wouldn't you wouldn't call one of the glory programs Oregon State, although they've done very well. Uh, he's never really won all that many big games either. I mean, I guess every time you win a game at Oregon State, it could be a big game in the Pac-12. But so kind of strange there. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. SC's got a great quarterback and Cody Kessler. He had over 3,500 yards passing this year. Broke all kinds of school records set by Mark Sanchez a couple of years ago. Steve Sarkeesian in his very first full year. 
All right, that'll be the Qualcomm Bowl. That's in San Diego. And for those wondering where that'll be, it'll be on ESPN. And then on Monday the 29th, a very intriguing game, Oklahoma State and Clemson. And uh, Clemson's had a pretty good year. Only lost uh, three games, two of those to Florida State and Georgia Tech. And um, Oklahoma State is favored by a point in that one. But Oklahoma, 8-4 and four record. Another program, Justice, that, um, you know, really is – is a good program, but maybe not quite like it was. No, absolutely. Oklahoma State had a, had a run for a couple of years where they were um, in the national championship talk and, and uh, have been down the last couple of years, but still a, a story and a great football program. Clemson, same way. They're kind of always in the hunt in the ACC and just can't get over uh, – um, on Florida State most years, but they, they did beat South Carolina, which is, I think believes the first time in six years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so again, another good game, um, good bowl game to watch. And that'll be the Florida Citrus Bowl. It's amazing what they call these bowls these days. That'll be on ESPN. Now, Oklahoma did lose to Kansas State by only one point, and they led most of the way, Bill Snyder's team at uh, the Manhattan School. On the 30th on a Tuesday, Notre Dame, who's got to be a disappointment. They're not even ranked. They'll be playing Louisiana State, 8-4. and four. Now, LSU at one time was in the top five during the first four or five weeks of the football season, but significantly you know, dropped off from there. They lost to Alabama in the last closing minute, so they've had some good games. Notre Dame was destroyed by USC, destroyed by Arizona State, and then beat at home by a couple teams they should not have been beaten by. Um, so where do, we, uh, where do we see USC, uh, or I beg your pardon, LSU and Notre Dame, Justice? Well, I, I foresee really not a, not a game at all. It might be one of those where you're switching to something else because uh, um, Notre Dame, again, great football program, had a run a year or two ago, but uh, name only. They're always going to get in a big-time bowl just because of uh, uh, Notre Dame and, and uh, you know, people that follow uh, that, that football program. But uh, I see LSU just, just rolling right over. On December, the th <clears throat> on December 30th, on a Tuesday, the Bank of America Bowl, and that'll be Georgia and Louisville. And uh, that game will be played in uh, Fayetteville. And Georgia, 9-3, and three, Louisville, 9-3. and three. Now, last year, Louisville had Teddy Bridgewater. This year, they have a junior by the name of Livingston as their quarterback. Not quite the, the same success there. Georgia had a couple of big wins. They had a chance to even go further. They lost to Georgia Tech, though. Georgia, a good program, but not quite the same since the days of Vince Dooley and a few other folks over there, Justice. Not sure, and, and especially with uh, um, Gurley being injured. Um, you know, perhaps maybe the best running back in the country. Um, but uh, they have certainly um, still got it and, and should give them a, a good game. Okay, we'll take our first break. When we come back, more. This is Ridgecrest Talk, our sports theme on Tuesday night, back after these words. And we're back. Tom Heck and Justice Scott, Justice, a baseball coach at Saracosa, and we're kind of going through the bowl games this time of year. It's a, it's a great holiday feast to be around the television and be with friends and watch some classic games. It seems every year we'll have I'll add another one and another one to the ESPN classics that are on TV, an interesting channel if you have that on your, on your set. As we continue, let's go to the Georgia Dome, and that'll be Ole Miss and TCU on New Year's Eve. Ole Miss 9-3 and three now. Ole Miss got off to a great start. They were actually had a number one ranking for several weeks. Lost the last uh, couple games towards the end of the year. They'll play TCU, and TCU's got a chip on their shoulder. TCU only lost one game all year. Best they've been in a long time. They're number six, Ole Miss number nine. The one lost by TCU was to Baylor, and they lost that one 61 to 58, if you can imagine. Now, I think the only thing that hurt them this year was the fact they only beat Kansas, lowly Kansas, 34-30. to And they had to come from behind to do that. But otherwise, the Horned Frogs, a good year. No, exactly. And you said it best, that they will have a chip on their shoulders. They think they should be in that uh, four spot. And, and so do a lot of people. And, and you're exactly right that uh, um, just barely squeaking by Kansas and I think plus having a 
that conference not having a conference championship um, in the eyes of, of the uh, um, the people that, that made these rankings might have hurt them a little bit too. But good football team in Ole Miss, that, that's going to be a great game. Let's talk about another one coming up here also on New Year's Eve. It'll be in Phoenix at the University of Phoenix Stadium that's over in Glendale. It'll be Arizona and Boise State. I'm going to pick Boise State to, to win this game, and, and I like Arizona. Arizona's number 12. Boise State, though, I've watched them in their last couple games. I watched them play Fresno State. They just destroyed Fresno State in the Mountain West Championship. Then I watched them a few weeks earlier on that blue turf, and they destroyed Wyoming. Um, everybody they played the last four weeks of the season, they just, I mean, it wasn't even a football game. They've won eight in a row after a slow start, and they're coming on a little bit. Arizona got to play in that Pac-12 championship game up in Eugene. Things didn't go very well. They got killed 51-13. to In actual, it wasn't even that close. It was 51-6. to They scored at the very end. But Arizona, a bigger program, maybe more exposure sometimes this year. Boise State's had their moments. Um, where do you see that game? I, I see it uh, uh, very close because Boise State, like you said, has been, you know, you know they get overlooked a little bit because who they play and, and uh, where they're located, but uh, they're always kind of in it. They've had a great uh, tradition for the last about 10 years and have played in, in big games. Um, coaching staff is coaching big games, so they're not uh, they're not afraid of Arizona. That's that's for sure. But Arizona again, you know, quality football team. So I don't know if they'll show up like you know Arizona State or who you know um, against Oregon. It just depends. And Arizona had some probably the the toughest game of the season for Arizona. They could not get things going against USC. They lost to USC in Tucson, a game that they should have won. Now, had they won that game, uh, and had they, of course, if they, if, 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 had they done a few other things, who knows where they would have ended up. But they didn't, and we continue on. New Year's Eve, also, Mississippi State takes on Georgia Tech in the Sun Life Bowl, and I'm going to go ahead and take Georgia Tech, I like them. They're number 10 in the country. Mississippi State's a good football team. They were number 8. They had a couple of a good wins this season. They barely lost to Alabama, only lost two games. And uh, Georgia Tech, I watched them play Georgia, impressed with their defense. Uh, so that should be fairly close, but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, like I said, take the Yellow Jackets in that one. Now here's an interesting one, Justice. One I'm going to really, another intriguing situation here. On New Year's Day, it'll be the Raymond James Stadium Bowl, and that's down in Orlando. Don't know why they changed that, but they did. And in that game, it'll be Wisconsin and Auburn. Now, Wisconsin ranked 17, Auburn 19. Wisconsin had a great run this season until their very last game when they played for that Big East championship. And they lost, I mean, not only lost, but Ohio State beat them 59 to nothing. 59 to nothing. That was on national television. And right after that game, their coach, Gary Anderson, well, the next day, not right after, but within the next several days, resigned as football coach and took the job at Oregon State. Very interesting on that one. But your thoughts? Well, it's Wisconsin is in a tough spot. It's tough to go into a, a bowl game and, and, and basically a month of practice um, with, with somebody new, even if it's you know, the head assistant, the uh, offensive or defensive coordinator um, in charge. So that, that's something they're going to have to overcome. Um, and, and plus they're going to have a chip on their shoulder for, for getting embarrassed by Ohio State. I don't think anybody – um, expected that or saw that. So that'll be a good game. Now, it was just last Thursday that they named Paul Christ as their head football coach, and he used to be their offensive coordinator at Wisconsin, and now he's the head coach at Pittsburgh, or up until last Thursday, was a head coach at Pittsburgh. Isn't it amazing how coaches just jump from one place to the next, and with all that money out there? You know, the kids can't do it, but the coaches can sure do it. And what's really tough about that is sometimes kids go to a school because of the coach, and now maybe a sophomore, junior, the guy that you came there for is gone. It's a tough gig. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a revolving door, and it seems like uh, coaches, once you get to that, that level, um, you, you network so much and you know so many guys and you're comfortable with so many guys that a guy gets a job somewhere. 
they ask you, you go to them. So yeah, it's certainly a revolving door, and, and obviously a lot of it has to do with uh, how much can they pay me. Um, do I, does it look like a better spot to jump up to my next job? Mm -hmm. Also on New Year's Day, we, we see Michigan State playing against Baylor in the AT&T Stadium Bowl. Now Michigan State, 10-2. and two. What hurt them this year, they lost at home pretty badly to Ohio State. That was their big bump in the road. And a team that was ranked number four and still is ranked number four, but not in that bowl series at 11-1 and one Baylor. And the Bears are not too happy that they're not playing either in that top four. Yeah, they have a chip on their shoulder, certainly. Um, to me, this might be one of the more interesting games until you get to the playoffs because you got a um, one of the nation's best defenses in Michigan State, and you got one of the most pro prolific, high-powered offenses in Baylor. So, and they say defense wins championships, so we'll see. That, that'll be a good test. When we come back, we're going to have more. We have a few more games on New Year's Day. we talk a little bit about the UCLA-Kansas uh, State game that will be coming up also on January 2nd. Don't go away. Last segment coming up back after these words. And welcome back, Tom Heck, Justice Scott. And if you just tuned in, tonight we're discussing college football bowl games over the holiday season. And if you're a football fan, then you're just waiting and for this time of the year. And if you're really a big football fan, if you love the NFL and the NCAA, well, this is a place where you can just lay your head by the TV for the next two or three weeks and watch a lot of great football and maybe some not-so-great football also, depending on who you're watching. But uh, let's go to uh, January 1st again, the Florida Citrus Bowl, one of the oldest bowls around. Missouri at 10-3 and is taking on Minnesota at 8-4. and four. And Minnesota, bless their hearts, going through one of their best seasons in the history of Golden Gopher football. Their marquee win of the year, they went into Lincoln and defeated Nebraska, and that might have cost that game Bo Pelini, his job. It was a real tight game, went back and forth. Nebraska with some opportunities, but Minnesota held on, and they're in a major bowl game. I don't know how much this bowl game is worth, but it's probably in that eight or nine million category, as uh, the ones if you get to New Year's Day pretty much are. Uh, then the big ones, so the top four folks, will probably play for, you know, 60 to 70 million dollars and it just keeps going up and it gets ridiculous but we'll talk about that at the end if we have time um you take in minnesota or missouri i know you're kind of a tiger fan but oh i'm kind of an sec fan so you know um yeah i'll, t I'll take missouri in that one not that minnesota is a, a bad football team very good football team but you know the sec is just again to me is a league of their own missouri won some tight games this year and lost some tight games their marquee loss was kansas state they lost by three touchdowns in that game. All right, the big game. We're going to go into the big boys here, uh, the top four. But first, let's talk about Kansas State and UCLA on January 2nd in San Antonio at the Alamo Bowl. And Kansas State under legendary Bill Snyder, 9-3. and three. UCLA under second-year coach Jim Mora, the same record. Brett Hundley, arguably one of the best quarterbacks that ever played at UCLA or in the Pac-12, but UCLA coming off a big bump, and that big bump was their last loss, a regular season loss, to Stanford. Had they won that game, they would have been in the Rose Bowl, or they would have been in the Pac-12 championship game, and who knows what would have happened. They would have had a chance to play Oregon again, but it didn't happen. They're playing Kansas State. Your call. I think it really depends on what team for UCLA shows up, kind of like we were talking about with Arizona. They, they've up and down all year. They're certainly talented enough to play with anybody in the country. And you know, I think UCLA shows up and, and wins that football game. Mm -hmm. Now remember, UCLA beat Notre Dame easily at home, and then they turned around and beat UCLA just as easy, or I beg your pardon, USC just as easily. So that's a good point, which Bruins are going to show up. But I'll tell you what, Stanford ended up the season with a 7-5 uh, and 
five record. Stanford played their best football game of the year, that last regular season game at the Rose Bowl, to really ruin the Bruins' season, so to say. All right, now we got the top four, the big boys. Number five, Ohio State takes on number one, Alabama. Ohio State 12-1, and one, Alabama 12-1. and one. Alabama, uh, or Ohio State, had that 59 to nothing win over, Nebraska, over uh, Wisconsin. The last game of the season on national TV. Ohio State didn't get a lot of um, love early in the year as far as being in the top, you know, eight, top ten teams because of the softer schedule they played. Their big bump in the road and their only loss was at home to Virginia Tech. And after that game, Virginia Tech really struggled. So is that one of those where it could go either way? How do you see Coach Shula and, and folks? Well, well, two great coaches going in, and I don't think uh, it could go either way. I think Alabama um, wins just by purely talent and, and also the quarterback position, position. I think Ohio State is a uh, uh, third-string quarterback going, um, you know, and going up against Saban's defense in Alabama. That, that, that's, a tough, uh, that's a tough road to hope. And how about uh, James Winston in Florida State taking on Oregon? In the Rose Bowl, Oregon 12 and 1, Florida State 13 and 0. But Florida State barely beat people. They beat Boston College 20 to 17, the next to last regular game of the year. They only got by Notre Dame 31 to 27. They barely beat Florida 24 to 19, and they really, I thought, should have lost to Miami. They came back and won that game 30 to 26. Can James Winston dodge another bullet against Oregon? I don't think so. I mean, I think they probably should have lost five or six games, and and it, it's a good sign for a team, a good team to to win when when um, to come back and win and just find a way to win. But I don't think they get it done against Oregon. I think Oregon uh, uh, wins that football game and, and plays Alabama in the championship. So we're going to take Oregon and Alabama. And any guess on that one? I'll, I'll just I'll call Oregon just to because you have to pick somebody, but uh, I think they get it done this year and, and get their first one. The Quack Attack, the Fighting Ducks of Oregon. All right. Um, lastly, Michigan, not in the bowl picture this year, for only like the I believe the second time since 1973. In our last minute and a half, Michigan, there's you know no uh, secret they've been courting some big time football coaches. Jim Harbaugh, the latest, the head coach right now of the 49ers. 49ers not in the playoffs here. Uh, they've gone through a tough season. They're just at 500, 7-7. Seven and seven. They offered him $48 million. The Raiders want him bad, too, right across the bay. They've offered him a king's ransom. Where and what do you think Jim Harbaugh is going to do? Well, I think both of them are similar in a way. Uh, you know, I think Harbaugh wants a wants a challenge, and and both the Raiders and Michigan offer that challenge to him. I think obviously the Raiders more of a challenge, um, but uh, I could see him going either or. I I could see him going back to college, and uh, you know the success he had at San Diego State and Stanford, that maybe get back in the college game and deal with college athletes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. It's hard to say, but you know, Michigan guy. I mean, Harbaugh's you know bleeds the yellow and the of the Wolverines, and uh, I know that, um, you know, Oakland has struggled in the NFL. I'm not sure why you'd want the Oakland Raiders job. I know I know that uh, Fritz here, our, the uh, station manager here, the CEO, so to say, uh, has season tickets to the Raider games and commutes on the weekend and spends an awful lot of money on the Raiders, and we've seen him dressed in his black and silver at times. But I You're tell you what, me, bro. I You're would not me, want that job for all the tea in China if I was a football coach but I think you either stay with San Francisco or you go ahead and just buy your own country and take the Michigan job in our last five seconds or so what do you think Justin? I agree Michigan that would be a smart call okay he yeah. says Michigan we'll wait and see all right at this time we'd like to wish everyone a very happy holiday season hopefully we'll see you again here in a few weeks and uh, once again we appreciate you tuning in to KZGN this is Ridgecrest Talk I am Tom Heck, bidding you a very pleasant good evening.